Floss Tube. This is Becky, the South Texas Stitcher. Welcome. Uh, if this is your first time to watch, this is a uh, floss tube and it's about cross stitch and a few other odds and ends. Um, I don't knit, I don't quilt, so pretty much just cross stitch. Today is, a, today is October 6th and I really thought yesterday was October 6th because I have a doctor's appointment later today. And I got prepped yesterday for the doctor's appointment, only to be told, today's the 5th. And I went, what? <laughs> so I'm a little off on my dates, but I do know today is it because I have to leave in about, oh, an hour, an hour or so. So this won't be a very long video. But I do have a few things. Uh, if, you're, if you're returning, thank you. If this is your first time, thank you. I always forget to do that, and I want to make sure I do that multiple times maybe this time my first thing i want to do though is announce the winner for sign from heaven it's jean trucky and she said cardinals uh, made her think of her mom in fact they even have a little cardinal engraved on her headstone so i hope she enjoys stitching this and it brings back the memories that she wants and i find that so touching what she she wrote to me. Um, I, I know that with my dad passed away, he liked to watch uh, the birds. He liked to watch hummingbirds. Um, they had hummingbird feeders. When they lived out in the country, they had hummingbird feeders. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but hummingbirds are nasty little birds. They will beat each other up. And if you were sitting too close to their bird feeder, their little, y'all have seen them, the little, bottle of water that hangs down upside down on the little red base because the red attracts them. They will attack a human if they're sitting too close. And my mom had one sitting on her deck and her deck was up high because their backyard dropped off. And uh, I forget who it was who was leaning against the fence on the deck and they almost went over because the hummingbird came at them. So after that, if you sat against that side of the deck, you had to sit on the chair down low it also kind of kept the hummingbird from attacking your head. Um, then I want to go on and say thank you to Janice Wright from Spirit of Stitching. Uh, I was part of a virtual uh, stitching chat on the 26th of September, I believe. And uh, I won a door prize. Which kind of made me laugh because I'm like, well, we're not even in person and we're still winning your prizes. I took this out of the plastic, sorry. And it is a pin keep and this is from um, the pin keep by Linda Thran. And um, it's a little, I guess it's a little roll. I haven't looked at it too closely yet. On the, uh, it's got a lot of instructions on it and stuff. So I have to, to read all that and see. But of course, I don't know if I'm going to make it into a pin cape or just make it into a little pillow because it is cute. And I mean, I can just toss that onto my uh, table or something. I don't have a bread bowl, <laughs> namely because if I had a bread bowl, I'd probably be using it to make bread. <laughs> um, I have seen some little displays and stuff. I don't have any pillows or anything, and I, I have all kinds of patterns, so it would be very easy for me to do that. My concern is if I made a bread bowl or any other kind of display with little pillows, that it would become the cat's bed, and I don't want to do that. So, I'm just doing that. My tablet is doing strange things. The next thing I want to show you, I have FFOs. I'm so excited. Both of these are from Redbird Designs. One is from this year. This is the new um, monthly pattern. This is so cute. And it only took me a couple of hours and one afternoon to do. And then it took me like another hour to put all this. I didn't have an exact orange. But I like this because it makes me think, you know, when the sun is setting and it'll cast an orange or your red glow and you get the wisps of the clouds. That's what it made me think of. So that's why I use that. And then my, uh, my, uh, it's, it's, it's a braid really. I just took uh, garden twine 
and a piece of black burgundy and braid, made a big braid and then glued that around. But that is the Redbird Designs and it's, this is just, it's just called October. Um, Redbird Designs are only sold in Texas and you have to go to Stitches from the Heart in San Antonio or contact Stitches from the Heart in San Antonio or I believe Three Stitches in Spring, Texas. I think they're the only ones who carry Redbird Designs. But this, it was so cute when I saw this. I said, oh, I must stitch this. Oh, and this is a little, a little button. So that little button there. And it came, but I bought it. It came with my kit. I don't know if all the kits have the little button or if that's something that my LNS knows that I want. And they put it in there and just charge me a little bit more. This is a piece that I finished last year. Last year. But I actually got the pattern a couple of years before that. This is another Redbird design. I think I may have showed this as an unfinished object or an NF, an NF, an F, an, it was an FO. It was just a finished object. It wasn't finished, finished. But I have finished it, made it into a little wall tapestry hanging thing from my front door area. Um, it says, may the blue bonnets return to your fields every spring. May the hill country breezes cool your brow on a hot day. May you remember the Alamo and the brave first Texans. And until we meet again, may you stay deep in the heart of Texas. It's a Texas blessing. I got buzz on it. And you want to talk about repurposing? These are my blue jeans. <laughs> they They were shredding and... The seat area and it was like well I don't want to just throw them away I mean all that denim so I chopped up one of the legs and made strips and bound it the back was the piece of fabric that it originally came came with because they wanted you to make that this part and I didn't like that because it was just too dark and I thought the blue jeans were a much better fit I had blue bonnet fabric and I thought about that, but then it made it too busy when I held it up against each other. It was like, oh, no, that's too much. Too, too much. Got to tone it down just a little bit and make people focus on the needlework and not on what was around it. Uh, if you, if I look like I'm wearing odd colors here, this is my, my apron. My cat keeps wanting to jump on me, and I'm trying to keep my shirt from being one mass of fur for my appointment later on. <clears throat> I do have, let's see, technically I have this much haul. <laughs> As we say, my family, muy poquito. Just a little bit more of my Spanish. Woohoo, muy poquito. muy poquito. That's it. I know a lot of people are talking about this. Well, I have to admit, because I follow long dog samplers, a lot of people are talking about it. I know some people. I've never heard of them. Other people think that they're too big. But this is called the new normal. And I think this is awesome. And I've already seen people start this. And they're doing each bubble in a different color. And I thought, well, that was a really cool idea. But I don't know if I'd want to do that or just do another all one color. Um, I've done Death by Cross Stitch. I have the Templar Prophecy started i'm working on pandemic this is not being done anytime soon i am not that cra well i am that crazy but i am not that crazy <laughs> let's define crazy here having one too many long dogs started then i just bought a piece of antique white lagunum now you're going to think this is a strange shape and it is because I cut it in half because it was a uh, fat quarter. And I'm going to show you the other half in just a few minutes because I got crazy with it. So I had purchased that. And then, let's see. I hope this shows up. I bought this thing, this strand here this skein because this is called desert mesquite and I wasn't even looking for a green but I saw that and I said you know what I have a lot of things that are called for green for leaves and stuff 
And I thought that was so pretty. All those different colors. And I have noticed, and maybe it's just me, that the um, the overdyes are not so much as overdyed as they used to be. I mean, it used to be, if you go to green, it was like 10 different shades of green from the one skein. And now when I'm going by, going by um, uh, skeins of floss, I'm having to look for something that's got an, a more of an overdyed look to it because some of them are almost just a solid color. And it's like, well, I don't want a solid color. I want the effect of the overdyed. If I wanted a solid color, I'd just go by DMC. So I really like this one because it has all the different colors in it. I really don't have anything white here to show this against. No, I don't. Let's see, Let's see if it'll show up against this bag. Oh yeah, look, that's better. It's one of the bags from the store. It's got light greens and dark greens, and it does, it does very much look like uh, the mesquite tree colors here in San Antonio, in the San Antonio, South Texas area. My dad's from Georgia, and I don't know if you've ever been to Georgia or Mississippi or, uh, or Louisiana, but they have got some, in East Texas, they have got some big, big trees. I mean, they're, they're logging countries. So they have got massive pines and, and other trees out there. Well, once you get to a certain part in Texas as you're coming west, the big trees kind of just die down and you get mesquite trees. And I've heard a lot of people call them, they just call them scrub trees. I personally think mesquite trees are fascinating. They are not as tall, of course, so they're gnarly. And when you see them, and, they, and especially if one is dying and it's got a buzzard on it, oh my God, it's the most awesome looking thing in the world. I don't do Halloween, but to me, every dying mesquite tree should have at least one or two buzzards in it just because the effect is cool. My husband always laughs. I said, look at that tree. And he goes, yes, yes, I know. We lived in East Texas for a while in an area, it was called the Magnolia area. Not Magnolia, Texas, but the Magnolia area. It's between Cold Spring, Texas and Cleveland, Texas. It's in the middle of the uh, Sam Houston National Forest. It was a fascinating time to live in the middle of the National Forest. And we had this tree stump. It's not, well, it wasn't even a stump. It was a dead tree in our front yard. And um, my husband used to laugh at me because I always told him, I said, I just, I just want a buzzard to stamp in there all the time. I never saw a buzzard in that tree, on, the, on that tree. It basically was a post with like, two sticky things out of it. That was it. Because it had been so, I don't know if it had died due to, a, due to a drought. I don't know if someone tried to take it out and then they just quit or what. But it was just this big tree stump thing. And um, he used to laugh at me that I always wanted to go and put a buzzard up in the tree. And um, it was so funny. But anyway, back to stitching. Less about, oh, and, and to let you know, mesquites make excellent Firewood, if you're going to barbecue, in fact, if you look at your charcoal, a lot of it will say um, mesquite infused or something like that because mesquite, in fact, excuse me, when we barbecue, we don't really use briquettes at all. We use the pure mesquite wood because a lot of times you can just find it laying on the side of the road from when they're clearing timber and stuff around here. Then, my fabric from Be Stitched Me came in. I got it the day after I complained about it on my last video. So I was able to start Mayari. Look up Mayari's background. It is so cool. She is a Filipino goddess. Um, oh no, excuse me, Tagalog. She's not necessarily Filipino. She's a Tagalog uh, goddess. And I was reading, because somebody asked me about her. I said, you know, I really don't know anything about her. I don't know if it was just a design that they made up and that's what they called her or she was actually a goddess you know and you don't think about it I mean you got the Roman gods and the Greek gods but no one ever thinks about the other backgrounds having their own gods and goddesses and spiritual beings and stuff and I had not thought about the fact that I mean I, I have to admit I'm guilty of that I had never thought about the, the Filipino people having their own gods and goddesses, but it makes sense that they do. But this is Mayari. 
and I loved her story. You need to go look it up. I'm not going to tell you the whole thing because otherwise it defeats the purpose of you looking it up yourself. Just to let you know, it's a cool story. Worthy of a movie. <laughs> but let me show you. This is what I have done. I have a lot of her, a good portion of her skirt and part of her, uh, her, uh, her teal drape there going. It's actually stitching up pretty nicely. Um, this is all uh, crinic down here and makes me just a little crazy. And I know the pattern called for two, two little rolls in it, but I'm hoping two rolls is going to be enough. I think it will be, but I was looking at it and I think what, I guess one of my rolls, it just didn't look like I had a lot of uh, uh, floss on it, but that is, all crying. I love these colors. And as you can see, this is part of the, the, the fabric. Let me see. And it's supposed to look like the cosmos. And in fact, that's what it's called. It's cosmos. So she is hovering in the air. She is supposed to be goddess of the moon. <laughs> Excuse me. This is a tight Q-snap. Should have taken it off beforehand. I was stitching on her just, I guess, day before yesterday. And I put her down for a little bit. I, I I don't have a problem stitching on dark fabrics, but after, I do have to stop every so often. But yes, that's Cosmos with Mayari, and she's supposed to be 27 inches. 27? 20, 24 inches tall. Excuse me. She's 24 inches tall. So she is going to be a big girl. Svelte. She's going to be tall and svelte. <laughs> I used to be tall and svelte. Now I'm just tall and mm, needs to lose weight. <laughs> I do hold the beading until the end. I don't bead while I stitch. Uh, I have a friend who beads while she stitches, but I don't know how she does that because this one's got beads crawl across the bottom and then up higher and then there's beads up and in, in they're towards them. So I'm thinking, how would you put your Q-snap on? And I know she uses Q-snap. So I don't know how she does that. And I've thought about asking her. I just have not. When I stitch on black, I do have to use Q-snaps or a hoop. I have to make sure, I mean, or a dark color. People complain about it. And a lot of people will tell me what they stitch in hand. You cannot do a dark color stitched on hand comfortably. You can, but you'll probably end up frogging a lot or cussing at it. I've discovered that if I make sure I put it in a Q-snap and have my my light, my alt light shining on it, I have no problems. And I used to wear, and if it's black, black, I have a, a, a white house coat. So in the evenings I'll stitch and I'll just go get ready for bed and put on my robe. And that robe reflects up the light this way and I got light going this way and it's not a problem. So, give give dark colors a try. Now, if you have just really bad vision, I can understand why you can't. But people who can't stitch on it because of their vision have made people who have never tried to stitch on it not want to because the first thing they say is, oh, you can't do it. It's too hard. It's too hard. You don't want to do that. Go do it on a different color. Try it for yourself. Don't just take somebody else's word. Buy a little square of it. I mean, I bought, I recently just bought a scrap. It's this big. I'm going to do a little ornament on it. So, I mean, the little pieces are out there. Try it. Don't, don't just say, oh, I can't do it because so-and-so says it's too hard. No, no, no. It's like my grandchildren. They make me a little crazy at times because they have a parent, I'm not going to say which one, that does not like spicy food. And so therefore, they won't eat hot sauce. This is Texas. You have to eat hot sauce. So, <laughs> and you got to get the good stuff. Tomato paste is not hot sauce. And uh, the uh, kids, when they come, if I put any kind of spice to it, the first thing they are told is, oh, be careful, that'll burn your mouth. Well, then they don't want to eat it because they've been told it's going to burn their mouth. They've not touched it. They've not put it in their mouth. They have not a clue if they're going to like it or not. They may like spicy food. They'll never know because they've been told, don't touch that. It's spicy or it's hot. So, yes, that annoys me. I don't think they realize that it would annoy me. Yes. <laughs> Let them try it first. 
all of my children are hot sauce fanatics. When uh, the kids were little, we'd go to a Mexican restaurant and we have discovered Mexican restaurants out of Texas are not always the best. Not exactly sure where their Mexican person came from, but the food was mm. Velveeta cheese is not a Mexican food. I'm sorry. I hate queso. It's disgusting. It's not a cheese. Anyway, we would, went to a couple of places and my son would sit there with one chip when he was little and he would just eat the hot sauce off that one chip. And you would try and tell him, you know, give me the chip and I'll give you a new one. But that was his chip. And he would have a meltdown if he tried to take his chip away. So we would make sure he had his own bowl of salsa because nobody wanted to touch it after his hand went through it because by the time he finished, the chip was limp and wet and hanging down his hand and he's looking this basically salsa off his hand. But that was his chip and he just didn't understand the concept of we would give him another one. Just let us have that one. And then as they got older, my son and my husband would sit there and they would tell the waiter or waitress when they would bring the salsa, if it was not what they were looking, if it wasn't hot enough, they would say, excuse me, do you have something other than this tomato sauce? And I know they've insulted a few places when they, they go, that is our hottest sauce that we make. And, and all of us are like, uh-huh. Chopped up tomatoes, onion, cilantro, with three little jalapeno peppers in it, or little sliced little cubes of jalapeno, is not a salsa. I'm sorry. That's just a tomato salad with a lot of onion. And I hate cilantro. So anyway. Let me get off my high horse on Mexican food because I can wax eloquent on Mexican food. So I should have said I cut that piece of white in half. So this will be the last of my haul. We had dinner with my mother the other night. And while we were there, she gave us pickled beets. My husband hates pickled beets, but I, I like them. And it was the end of her jar. And so she had put, she had pulled out the beets and just had put the jar on the back of the counter. Anyway, we had eaten dinner and there was still the beet juice on the table from in the little bowl she'd put it in. And um, I said, can I have your beet juice? And she goes, you're going to drink the beet juice? I said, no, I just want the beet juice. And she was like, okay, why do you want the beet juice? I said, because I'm going to try an experiment. So I had started, or I was going to start my welcome by the drawn thread for autumn and I didn't get it I was gonna do it before autumn started but I didn't get a chance to get everything together and I pulled out the fabric because I had when I bought this is because I had a piece of fabric in my stash and I went oh my god that's gonna be perfect on pulled everything out Pulled out some floss, was going to start it, and realized the fabric was two inches too short. And I thought, well, what if I give it just like a very narrow margin? And I'm like, no, because I mean, I would have almost no nothing to finish it with. And I could have sewed fabric on the end and stuff like that. But I mean, it was going to be just too close. I had bought um, what I thought was, uh, well... According to the packaging unit, it was a fat eight. But when I measured it, it was less than it was a little less than 17 inches instead of 18 inches. And I had been counting on that 18 inches because otherwise I would have had an inch and a half on either end, and I could it would have been no problem for me to frame it or, or mount it or whatever I was going to do with it. But losing that two inches, it was going to give me like that much on either side does like no i i just won't do that to myself it'll freak me out so i started this i took the beet juice cut that piece of fabric in half and surged the two sides so it wouldn't unfray completely on me and took the beet juice and brought it home and dipped my fabric in it and this is pickled beet juice and then I dunked it in tea so that I get it. Because when I first did it, it was like, Susha! <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a little bit much. So 
I, I tea dyed it after I dipped it in the beet juice. I, I let the, and I, I, there was like two little pieces of beets at the bottom of it that I didn't see. So when I poured it in there, they were sitting on the fabric. And at first I was going to go pick them off. I said, you know what? I'll just leave the beets there in case they leave a nice little ring or something. And they, they didn't because the tea, unfortunately, I didn't think about how much the tea was going to wash out the, the beautiful colors it had been. But here is the whole thing. So it says beet juice and tea. And I have begun the, I finished the C with the pumpkin and started the O. And uh, this is actually stitching up kind of fast. And it really helps when you have all the floss. <laughs> because after I found the, uh, after I got the, uh, the, uh, found out that the the fabric wasn't big enough then I discovered I didn't have enough floss and I didn't have the correct orange for a pumpkin it was like Ugh. but these are let me show this. these are my colors that I picked I didn't buy the silks but these are the colors I picked for it and uh, they're mostly just Gassed and Weeks Dye Works and some classic color works. Oh, and I did get two thread works. I always forget that thread works comes with 10, 20 yards on their skein. And I don't know why I buy, don't buy more thread works because it would probably do away with buying a lot of, you know, multiple skeins of these. But, uh, but I can't get it to show you all the colors all at once. Anyway, those are the colors I purchased. And, and some of the colors on this, like the uh, uh, the top of the pumpkin, the little pant, the little stem, and the squirrel and stuff, were supposed to be the exact same color, and I didn't like that. So like my squirrel's not going to be that gray, and my stem was Weeks Dye Works Harvest, because that to me that looked more pumpkiny color than the gray. I was like. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to do a gray stem. It just didn't seem right. So that's that is being worked on. So and, and I was very surprised at how fast it is stitching. I mean, I was done with the C in almost no time at all. And it was like, wow. So then I started doing the leaves. It was like, okay, there's three leaves or four leaves. I was like, whoa, okay, those are done. So and I, I, I have a bag for that, which my wonderful cat is sitting on right now. It's really not my bag. It's the bag I made for my daughter. But she, since I haven't been able to see her, we haven't been able to exchange it yet, I am now absconding with it until she comes and then I'll empty it out for her. Then, the next thing I got, well not got, but did, you phrase that wording, the next thing I started was I started my buffalo. Yes, my little buffalo. The heart is all silk. And I've not really worked with silk before, so this is something new for me to try. And I mean, I, I have done a few little pieces that had like, you know, 20 stitches of silk on it, which is not really a good scale on to what to judge stitching with silk with, because it was just, it was so quick. I was like, well, did I like that or not? Because it was just so fast. So the fact that the heart is all silk is a, a different thing. And I am stitching this on green. I think it's a Weeks Dye Works green. And it makes me think of prairie grass. Sorry, my phone for some reason, if I hit like 29 minutes point three it shuts everything off and you have to start all over again so anyway this is i think it was weak style works um green and it's 30 count i think that's what it called for 30 count or did it even give you a count no it did it said 28 but i'm doing it on 30. so here is what i have done so far I have done the bottom of the of the heart in his hoof, his his front hoof. So there it there it is. I kept having to check because 
the bottom of that heart to me it just it's gonna like huge and i was like well obviously i'm doing it right because i've counted a gazillion times <laughs> excuse me <laughs> something wafted through i guess so i i can't see that i'm loving silk yet but i am working with it and i am using the called for color which was golden grains there, we, there it is against that. So it's a very pale, creamy, with some peachy colors in it. It's, it's cream and peaches, I guess you would say, with maybe a little hint of yellow. So it's going to be interesting. As I said, I have not really stitched with a lot of silk before, except for maybe very few stitches. So this is a first for me. So at this moment, it's okay. We'll see how it goes. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, then let's see. Oh, well, never mind. I'll show it to you at the end. <laughs> Toy with you. What did she want to show us? <laughs> then I picked up my. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up real quick. I picked up my um, Southern Lands from Owl Forest Embroidery. And I probably should have looked this up beforehand, and I don't think I did. My pattern is in my cell phone, which is what I'm using to record with. So I have to pull it up on the actual website. They have a new free chart out. It's like, I think it's 100 owls. I am not doing 100 owls. Um, that's just a bit much for me. So if you're interested in stitching owls, they do have a new... Um, I think it's a stitch along. I don't think it's just a regular, uh, uh, I don't think it's like, here's the pattern. I think you have to get it in different sections. So, oh, I forgot. I love some of their stuff. So here we go. Let's see if I can make it a big for you. Okay, here is the picture. Let's see, this is gonna show, there we go. There is the picture <clears throat> of Southern Land, what it's gonna look like when it's finished. Ha 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 ha. And uh, I think those colors are just spectacular. Now, I did not buy the Russian floss. I went and pulled the DMC, and then I took it over to our big wall and pulled the colors that I wanted because I was not waiting five months for floss, which is bad because I could have waited, especially since I have so many other things to stitch, but I wanted to start this soon. So here's what I have done. I have now officially gone from corner to corner across the bottom. I start, I always start my patterns in the bottom left hand corner. Very rarely do I ever start someplace else, unless it's a perfect square and I'm working with a perfect square piece of fabric. Well, that was odd. Uh, so that is it across the bottom so i'm i am doing pretty good <clears throat> on that my concern is that i bought two skeins of every color because that's what it looked like it was calling for in the picture when you buy the floss i don't know if their skeins come with more floss on them or not but now I'm beginning to be concerned that I may not have bought enough. But those are the colors I got. And this is Louisiana Hot Sauce, which I think is a fantastic red. And then Grenadine, which is my salmon -y color. That's a word, salmon -y. <laughs> And then we have Weeks Dye Works Jaybird. And then Classic Color Works old blue jeans which my blue, my old blue jeans never looked that good <laughs> so i like that color i wish my blue jeans did look that color so those were my new or not my new but those are my russian pattern and i did buy the pdf download because it was just quicker and i had to make a project bag for this because I didn't want to you know have everything disappear 
And since it is called Southern Land, even though it has nothing to do with cactus, I bought cactus fabric. I love that. I thought it was so cute. And then because it's my owl flourish pattern, I put an owl zipper pool on my owl flourish pattern. If you look them up, they're owlforestembroidery.com slash are you? Because they're in Russia. I think that's how it's I think that's how it's labeled. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. No, I'm sorry, it's owlforest.ru. There is no dot com. It's owlforest.ru. And I'll put them at the bottom so if anybody's interested. As I said, they have got uh, a new free chart. I think I think it's a free chart. Let me see here. Free charts. And they have a very well laid out website. Ah, because it is a stitch along, they really don't show it to you. They just kind of plot where there's going to be a bird at so you don't get to see it. You have to download the pattern. Let's see. I do know that a few people have already started it and I can't think of who. There is a um, floss tuber who has started it. Oh, here's a picture. Let's see if I can blow this up. There's the beginning of the pattern. That's somebody has already stitched that. If you're into owls, that's the pattern that you need. So, and as I said, it is a free pattern on their their website. They have also um, Christmas cactus, or they did. Uh oh, did they do away with it? Oh, no, there it is. I keep telling myself I'm going to do these as little Christmas ornaments and I just haven't stitched them up yet. But aren't those cute? They're so cute. And barrel cactus are rare nowadays because bulldozers go in and clear the land and not ever think about the fact that, hey, there may be something there that's endangered and they just take it out. I am not a, what do you call it, person who runs around there and save the trees, save the trees. But I do believe you should investigate before you go in and bulldoze everything. Maybe there was something there that should not be removed or gently move it someplace else. But that's just my opinion. Then the next thing I worked on, which I work on on Sundays with the uh, pandemic stitch along. Hello, ladies. Sylvia. It's Sylvia uh, was the uh, lovely lady who donated the um, sign, sign from heaven to be given away um, she had two copies and she graciously gave it to us to pass on and I'm sure she'll be pleased to hear that Jean Truckee who won it is stitching it in honor of her mother because I think Sylvia is stitching it for her mother in honor of her father <laughs> so that's always a nice thing I don't stitch on Pandemic very much, but I do stitch on Sundays, and I did stitch on it a little extra this week because I wanted to finish this big, this big bad boy. But I have officially finished one page. That's page 16. Yay! <laughs> and then this is page 17 with just a little bit more that goes up here, and then I'll be finished with two pages. And I'm like, Phew. technically, if you took everything that I have done, because this goes up into page 11, and this is part of page 18. If you go in, and I think this is part of page 12 up here. This little thingy here, four pages. Really, people, you couldn't put fix the pattern where that's not on four different pages? Um, it's just my own pet peeve. So, I put went ahead and stitched 2020. Usually on a piece like this, I would have put in the 2 and left off the O. But this is called Pandemic. And I definitely wanted to make sure that this reflects the coronavirus pandemic and not the year I finished stitching it, which could be 2025, God knows when. Um, so I went ahead and put the 20 in. And then on page 
see it's page 20 so above 20 would be 15 I think on page 15 is where you put your initials on it's either 15 or 20 those the two in pages on the left when I get over there and I put my initials in I'll leave a space somewhere to put in the year that I actually finish it that way I have the coronavirus date and then I'll have the date of when I finish stitching it I, I just couldn't think of another better way to do it because I was I, I really wanted to put that 2020 in there but I also wanted to be able to put my my finish date and I figured that's going to be the best way to do it is to work in the date that I finished on the other side. Plus, 2020 is when I started it. So if anybody ever asked me, I could say, yes, I started in 2020 and here's the finished date over here. How cool is that? And I don't usually do things like that, but oh well. And as I said, I had to make a new bag for my Al Force embroidery. And because um, Mayari, uh, Deity of the Moon, has so many little beads and uh, uh, chronic fill blending or cords and uh, number fours and a couple of, I think some number eights that I was afraid I was going to lose all the little schools and I'll lose the beads, which I'm still waiting on a couple more to come in. So I had to make them make it a bag. Now this bag's not as big as the other ones, and uh, the polka dots is what's on the inside. But I loved these swirlies. And uh, I love paisley. And I saw that and I was like, ooh. And I bought this fabric in this dark. And then I bought it also in a lighter gray. Which I'll make another bag. As soon as I get more batting, I'll make another bag. And this works out great. This one is the biggest bag I have. See the difference? So... I probably should make more this size than the big size but this works great when you have a notebook for your pattern and um, it works as I said I have I have a uh, notebooks for my patterns this one didn't have a notebook so I, I made a, a working copy of that one because the dress, it does have so many swirls and stuff on it. I am having to mark off. And because it's not a PDF, I couldn't uh, put it in Pattern Keeper. I'm still iffy about Pattern Keeper. Um, sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. Pandemic, it's leaving off the back stitching, So I'm not happy with it for that. And... My Al Forest embroidery, it's working kind of fine, but Al Forest gives you, when they send you the PDF, they give you a color copy and a black and white copy. Well, when I downloaded it and put it into Pattern Keeper, I didn't think about it. And so I've got two black and white copies on top of each other because it doesn't pick up the color on the, um, uh, the, up the first section. So... To get an accurate account of where I'm at, I'm having to go through and down at the very bottom, mark off what I've stitched, and find the bottom page up in the middle and mark off that. And I was like, oh. I really thought about going back in and trying to um, remove the first, I think it's nine pages, remove the first nine pages and just leave the black and white. But then I'd have to go back through and recolor everything. And because it was looking for Russian numbers. It didn't like it until I went back in and put in our number. It was, it's more trouble. It's, it's not worth it. So I'll just continue on as it is and just in the future know that not to put in all the pages I get from my PDFs. And of course, I bought some new needles. I tried the past needles. Yes, they're very nice. Yes, they work very well. But these were 350. For 28 count for uh, 28s and Pat's needles were six dollars six dollars six fifty for 28s and you got five needles in the packs and you get six needles in here and I was like I'm sorry I can't afford to do Pat's I would like to but I can't but I like Bowen's I don't like John James and I don't like uh, what's the other one I can't think of the other one Definitely don't buy the DMCs. 
big bend in my hand. In fact, I was stitching this morning and I was looking down and I went, I think I bent my needle. And sure enough, my needle's got just a little curve. I have to admit, I used to never stitch in hand. It's only been in the last couple of months I started stitching with hand because my when I try to hold the cue snaps or a hoop, it just really was hurting my hand nowadays. So, <laughs> never stitched in really in hand before really. And I've noticed that when I'm stitching in hand, I'm bending the needles. They got this nice little curve to them, which actually works better when you're stitching in hand, I think. So I'm just gonna leave the curvy needles as, and stitch with them. I was gonna stitch on a uh, Christmas stocking this week and I even pulled one out and then I picked it up and I went, I don't want to do Christmas. I can't do Christmas right now. Um, I've got like three ornaments I want to make. I can't do Christmas right now. For some reason, and it used to, I love Christmas. I just am not in the Christmas mode at the moment. And if I try to go into the Christmas mode, it won't work. I have decided that since this is October and I really don't do Halloween, I have, as I said last time, I have a few Halloween pieces. And of course, now I have my new little pumpkin. I'm going to show you the Whip Graveyard. It's where it's where you it's where whips go to die. <laughs> I have got three or four places. What I really need to do is go through there and see exactly what I have. Some are kitted, some are not. Some have been cannibalized for their stuff, so they probably were kitted at one time, and now it's just the pattern. And then every so often, I find a pattern, and I'm like. I started this where's the piece and so now I gotta go find the piece so I will do a whip graveyard in the next couple of weeks and we'll see where we go from there but y'all have a good day please have enjoy your stitching I hope the frog does not visit you no frogs just tell yourself I'm not gonna have to frog today uh, and and go for it um, there's been some people on pandemic who have stitched for more than a day only discover that they made a mistake two days back and they're having to rip it out. And I'm like, oh God, I think in those cases, I would just find a spot that's correct again and start in the new spot and just kind of fudge until I met, made, it ma made it match. Because unpicking two or three days worth of work on something like pandemic would just blow my mind. As it is, I mean, I am, I don't usually have to do that. I mean, when I frog, we're talking maybe 15, 20 stitches. Very rarely have I ever had to pull out a great gob of the stitching. And a couple times I was like, I'm not frogging this. And I just took my needles, my scissors, and, went, and cut all the top stitches and ripped it out. Because it was too much. So, no frogs. I, I, I wish you no frogs. I wish you a good day of stitching. And I hope you have a great day in this fall weather even though in Texas we're still in the 80s and the 90s and uh, God bless you and we'll talk to you later bye